welcome back to the Galanaya Warpole is increasing. Intelligence reports indicate that bomber operations are being targeted on the battle platform. Heavy attacks on League battle platform forces are now expected by enemy ships traversing warp holes. Okay. System security procedures have been placed on an alert footing. Warp hole closure is imminent. Intercept and destroy all enemy craft in platform region. Ensure adequate firepower to cover execution of warp hole closure. Expect significant Navy interference. Will do. Extensive heavy support capabilities are required. The S-11 Demon has been assigned. So yes, welcome to the S-11 Demon. It is basically a massive peg of a ship. I mean, look at that thing. It's fat. It's just like a Hydra, but fat. Like, really fat. <sighs> That's personal opinion. Galanaya battle platform. Estimated time to warp hole closure, five minutes. Five minutes? We've got fighters coming through the warp hole. Let's give them hell. Get rid of the storm lord. So I'd get rid of the storm lord. And we'll move on to the uh, other one that started weakening. Well, we started weakening the hole, to be honest. Shield and grapple gun. This is command. A large enemy presence has been detected emerging from warp from warp hole. This poses a major threat to Galanaya platform. Engage and destroy enemy craft. And welcome to a Navy cruiser. Done. There we go. No. Nope. There we go. Perfect. And so fell one another of the Tsar's cruisers. Or this time, one of the Tsar's cruisers instead of a. You know. Sorry, mister. This is Battle Platform. Galanaya <laughs> Warp Hole successfully closed. Navy Titan has been crushed. Clear surrounding area Ooh. of enemy craft and return to base. Nice work. Crushed a Titan. Good timing with that, though. A little convenient, but good timing. Glad we didn't have to fight a team. Surrounding area clear. Well done, mission complete. Come back Ooh. on board. Docking okay. sequence initiated. <laughs> I love it. They just suddenly spawn more fighters than were in the entire uh, fight. I mean, we didn't have any Hydras defend. No, not Hydras. Um, yeah, Hydras. I was right. Defending us. And then suddenly, spawn Hydra! Anyway, I believe that we're about to end in enter a cutscene. I'll quickly save it. A baptism by fire. I will call it S. Um, 9 to 8 it's because I. I believe I could be wrong with this. That you cannot put in the full name. Let's just have a look. Yeah. Just another two. 
So, SN 928 will do it. Complete read, Colony Wars, SN 928. Ah, uh, back. And continue. It had been a baptism by fire for the League's fleet. But now we'd tasted victory, and it was a flavor we liked. Though even in the midst of all that joy, there was bitter resentment against the Tsar. He tried to tear apart our homes, and we knew he'd only failed because his forces were spread too thinly. Perhaps he didn't quite expect the guts and passion that the League delivered, but now he knew what we were capable of, he would undoubtedly try again. Unless, of course, we got him first. Anyway, we'll get to that in the next episode, but now time for the lower part. I'll be back in a second, once I figure out what we're meant to be looking at. So, see you in a moment. Welcome back to the lower section of the video. Let's have a look at the craft. Yes. Uh, if I remember right, we were piloting the, not strike, the bomber. S7 Chimera. Developed by a League loyalist known only as Regis during the mid-phase of the uprising, the Chimera has proved itself time and again to be one of the League's greatest military craft. Little is known about Regis other than that he was awarded the Flower of Honor by the Father himself. He was then thought to be in such danger of naval retribution that his identity was changed and he vanished. The Chimera is a heavy bomber responsible for destroying large numbers of Navy fleet craft. Hmm. This is vital, as current statistics show enemy fleet craft outnumbering the League's own by at least five to one. The craft is able to operate over long distances, delivering a heavy payload with extreme precision. Well, there is one advantage that the League have over... The Navy, or the, uh, what's it called? The Colonial Navy? And now, this is Ardom, basically, and that is numbers. Frig cruiser. Colonial Navy. The original cruiser models were adapted from the early frigates used by Colonial Population Control Divisions throughout the inner systems. Heavier protection was required once civilian zones began to engage in violent insurgency activities. And the first cruisers were used in anger during the 4091 Sky City riots on Jupiter. Its design has since proved highly effective in skirmish battles. The League's equivalent vessel is also regarded as a well-established and indispensable fleet craft. Hmm, intriguing. Well, we'll get to the Titan another time because we never actually fought the Titan. Destroy. Nor the Destroyer. So we'll get to those at another point. Um, I believe that's all we need to do right now. We've been to the battle platform and the starport. And escape pods. Right, okay. Uh, system database. Uh, last one we have. Uh, planets. Morpheus. Morpheus is a rock planet covered by vast mountain ranges which house large quantities of mineral-rich deposits. Extensive mining has taken place, although the tunnels and shafts which run beneath the planet's surface are now in danger of collapse. A program of remedial repairs is now underway. The mining colonies of Morpheus witnessed some of the fiercest uprisings against Empire control. For this reason, its history has been subject to extensive data wiping by the Empire. Indeed, Morpheus does not officially exist as far as the Empire is concerned. Oh! It is officially referred to only as a negative presence phenomenon. <laughs> a negative presence phenomena? Hmm. Morpheus was colonized in 4462 AD by a remotely operated landing vessel stocked with human embryos. Mm. It was the first planet to be colonized in such a manner. The embryos matured within the landing vessel until they were old enough to accept 
sensory stimulation, and knowledge accumulation procedures. No other human visited the planet until 4481, by which time the programmed embryos were mature adults who had already begun establishing a mining colony. Despite the efforts of the Empire to ensure the population was correctly programmed, the Morphians never accepted Empire control. They regarded themselves as natives of Morpheus only, and responded violently to Empire coercion. The mines were barricaded against incursion by Empire forces, and a series of conflicts set in progress, which ultimately helped establish the League of Free Worlds. Nice. That's actually kind of interesting that the morph how the Morphians were designed or not designed, uh well a kind of I guess designed because they did try and program them. And in essence designing them to accommodate the will of the Empire. And that's where the League of Free Nations apparently got. You know, Morpheus was traction. colonized in four four six two AD by remotely operated landing vessels. Oops, sorry, I'm a sick. All information is withheld. <laughs> Uh, all information is worth held. I'm sorry, but I find that kind of funny. So anyway, until next time, all the best, and I hope you enjoyed. We're off to Draco now.